Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another Agile Expertise Meetup. Um, firstly, need to say thank you, as ever, to Expertise Recruitment for helping sponsor this evening. And next, I'd like to obviously introduce Roy Marriott. Uh, Roy started out in software, working in places like BT and HP Research Labs, until one day a manager led him through a coaching conversation and he realized that's what he really wanted to do. So he started coaching people professionally way back in 1992 and has been training people to coach since 2005. He runs global online coach training programs for Solutions Academy, where he is the, wait for it, drum roll please, global director of Agile. He tells me they made that up in a Zoom meeting only yesterday. He thinks work should be really fun and loves the way the great coaching can make it that way, by getting people engaged in progress they want to make and, as we'll hear today, generating change without generating resistance. So my thanks to Roy. I'll hand over to Roy and uh, over to you. Enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you, Giles. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Lovely to see you. Um, so, as I said, it's a very interactive evening, but I am going to start with a couple of slides just to tell you a story before I tell you the overview of what we're going to do. So just to check everything's working, you should now be able to see a title slide that says generating change without change. Yep, people are nodding, that's a good, good mm -hmm. sign. So the story is about rescuing people from, people who'd fallen off their sea kayaks. Um, lousy picture, but you get the idea. Um, I'll share a bit more of it later on, but just to tell you the story. So what was happening was a lot of people were sea kayaking around the coast of the UK and they were, people were dying. They were falling off the sea kayak and they were, it was taking a long time for the emergency services to be alerted to the fact that they were in the water and freezing. And they, when the emergency services did hear there was a missing person, they didn't know where to look. The, the ironic thing is that these people all had mobile phones with them. But the mobile phone was in the kayak and they'd fallen off the kayak. So what the, it's, it's called the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, as uh, a venerable volunteer organisation in the UK. And what they decided to do was to produce some pouches um, to say, put your mobile phone in this pouch. Put the pouch around your neck using the lanyard and then if you fall off your sea kayak you'll be able to call for help and we'll know where to find you. Potentially a lifesaver. But guess what happened? It, it's interactive. Please guess out loud. Open your microphones and guess. <laughs> Fair didn't do it. No. Ah, well, no signal. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point, but it didn't even reach that point. Um, actually, it's, they couldn't open their phones. They, they didn't what, sorry? They couldn't open their phones through the plastic. It wasn't that. No, I mean, again, a, 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 an important point, but actually that wasn't the problem. Any, anyone else? It fell off. <laughs> Too far from a mobile phone signal. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the answer, I'll put you out of your misery. What actually happened is that they put the phone in the pouch, safely in the hold of the sea kayak. <laughs> <laughs> it made no significant difference whatsoever. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm seeing, actually, I'm seeing chat here. Um, so, yeah, Matthew's saying the signal's pretty good and Gweno, yeah, understand other commitments. Nice, nice of you to drop in. Um, so what they did instead, can anyone guess what they did to rectify the problem of the fact that people weren't actually putting these things around their necks when they were kayaking? They sent smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> Not from the <laughs> scene. Smoke signals is one possibility. 
another any other possibilities what would what would help to actually get this behavior change to happen talk to the kayakers and ask them why they weren't putting them around their necks good good idea very good idea yes was there was there, there was something else they did do though they 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 thought how can we get this behavior change to happen and they came up with an idea did they put a label on the kayak telling them not to store the phone in the uh, in the <laughs> kayak itself? So that that's an interesting idea. It's it's a very common health and safety thing, isn't it? You put a, put a sign up somewhere to tell Absolutely. people what not to do. Yeah? yeah, yeah. They actually they did this by asking a question. It's a solutions focused question. They said, "When do people carry their mobile phones anyway?" What what makes people want to carry their mobile phones? They want to take selfies. Yay! <laughs> so what they did is they produced exactly the same thing, but without the writing on it, and said, you can use this to take pictures while you're kayaking. And yes, it is safe, it won't fall off. Yeah? Problem solved. People carried the phone around their neck while they were kayaking. If they fell off the kayak, they had the phone with them, they were traceable and they were able to um, get the, um, they were able to, to call for help and people knew where they were. So that was the question. When do people already do this anyway? How can we utilize that? And there you go. There's an example of change without resistance. At first there was complete resistance change of strategy, new strategy, no resistance. So there's, there's my story to get us started. Um, we've already done that, who I am um, kind of thing. So overview, what we're going to do in this session, and I think we've got about 90 minutes from now, is that right, Charles? Yep, we have, yep, yep. Brilliant. So we will, by the way, there's research that says, um, I think it's Microsoft research that says that after, after 30 minutes, certainly after an hour, learning really tails off on online meetings. So we will be taking a break halfway through to, uh, to, to get us refreshed and back and receptive again. Anyway, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to be exploring our experience of when have you enjoyed change? And what helped, we'll come together and discuss what helped um, you to enjoy that change. And we'll pull that so we'll already have some learning of how to generate change without generating resistance, just from our experience in the group. Um, then I'll be asking you, what change do you want to happen? Uh, because, you know, this is practical. And with any luck, you know, my guess is probably about a quarter to a third of you by the end of the workshop will actually have something you can go away and practically do to get a ball rolling to get some change actually happening yeah so be thinking about a specific bit of change that you'd like to have happen maybe at work maybe at home there's not much difference these days is there um thirdly models of change and just a little flyer here um there's agile change and there's waterfall change i want to say in great big letters to the agile community at large stop doing agile change in a waterfall way <laughs> do agile change in an agile way and hey guess what i've got a seven step model of how to do that starting with the zone of productive change that's the thing we'll focus on today for your example um, yeah, so there's, you'll actually be thinking through how to apply the zone of productive change in your specific case. And with any luck, um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, we've got an hour and a half. That's where we'll get to. So, and yeah, questions and answers at the end. Um, copies of slides available by email. Giles and I haven't quite worked out how we'll do that, but uh, we'll, we'll find a way. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll find something that will make that happen. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I mean, would, maybe it would make sense just for people to put their email in the chat if they want the slides. I suppose one good way, something we normally do with the videos afterwards, we usually share the uh, link back to the YouTube channel for the video. So if there's a, um, a Google Drive or a Dropbox or something like that, they can get them from. We can also add the link into the meetup as well. Okay. So you will get slides, you don't need to photograph everything.
Uh, you can if you want. Um, so, when have you enjoyed change and when have you been pleased to engage with it? Um, so, I'm going to put that in the chat so that we can all see each other. Um, and I'd like you just to have a think. I'm a bit old fashioned actually. I think it's nice to, to, to use these things. I don't know if you, if you remember them. They, they, they're, best, they're best used with, with this stuff as well. <laughs> <Quite bored. laughs> just, just make some notes in whatever way you like um, about times when you've enjoyed change and been pleased to engage with it. And I'm going to give you a minute to do that. I'm going to give you a min minute to do that silently and then we'll come together and uh, start working in threes. We already have one great uh, comment in the, in the chat window uh, from Christopher. I love change when I'm the one kicking off the change. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, it's, it's humorous, but it's a really key, clear point, isn't it? We love change when we feel in control of it. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. So if we can help other people to be in control of the change, maybe together, maybe that's a key. That might just be kind of my key point here. <laughs> so if, you, if, you, if you're in a rush, that's it. Nothing else to learn. Uh, no, there's loads more to learn. Um, so, um, Giles, we're going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, so okay. are you brave or do you want to make me the host? I'm, I'm going to make you the host as you were talking about. You had specific numbers you wanted to do with this. So uh, I'm going to make you host. Uh, Brilliant, we thank you. So this is, by the, by the way folks, if anyone's got any leverage with Zoom and you can persuade them to let co-hosts do breakouts, that would be so wonderful. If you could just make me a co-host in the meantime, just so I can look after anybody that leaves That's and comes back also in. a phenomenally good idea. Um, thank you. More make. It's only one idea <laughs> of that. Yes, I do. Okay, so um if we create eight rooms then so giles i i recommend not accepting the invite to go into a room it's another thing about zoom it can't you can't tell people not not to be in any room so we're going to be in groups of two and three and what i'd like you to do is to tell each other, um, well ask, ask each other about the examples, maybe, maybe get one example from each person in the group and for each, for each of those examples, and if you get time obviously you can do more, but just ask the question what helped? A bit like we just did with, uh, you know, thanks, thank, thank you, was it Christopher? You know, it was a fantastic, yeah. fantastic example. Yeah, Christopher. You know, yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I kicked it off, so that helped. You know, that would be one example. So what I'd like you to do is to, um, how are we, we going to pull this together? I think we're going to pull all this together um, when we get back. So just everyone make a note of the things that help or, or yeah, sorry, I, I meant to have a jam board ready and I don't. Um, so yeah, just in each group, make sure that you get a list of all the different things that helped um, to make change easy uh, and enjoyable to engage with. Do we want one person to then come back from each group to share the outcomes from the conversation? What's going to happen is we'll come back and at that point we'll put them all into a jam board. Brilliant. Absolutely. So either have it so that you're ready to copy and paste, or I think it's best if each person keeps one, keeps their own notes or you 
work it, work it out in the group. Um, this is not my finest facilitation moment. Um, busy day. <laughs> anyway, are the, is, is the, are the instructions clear? Um, the idea is that, that we will spend six minutes in our groups of two or three working out what helped having told little stories about the examples. If that's clear, give me a thumbs up. Good. And come back ready to type into the format I give you the, the things that help. Or, or copy and paste if you're feeling slick. Good. So I'll open the rooms. What I'll do is I will close them with a minute to go. So, so no, don't come straight back, wait for the countdown timer to, to count down and just let it automatically bring you back. So you all come back at once. Yeah, see you in six minutes. So, Forgive my distraction for a moment, Giles. I'm just setting up that jam board. <laughs> no, no worries at all. That's brilliant. I'm not joining breakout room eight. Yeah, that's exactly what I what, <laughs> actually what might help if you oh hang on. If you go into if you go in and come back out again, then you can move around. Um we've got someone who's left. Um oh gosh. And we've got someone who hasn't joined. So a couple of people haven't joined yet. Um, okay. So if we... Well, I'm going to click later because I've got a choice of join or later. I think it's a good idea. If you, if you join and then come back out again, then you will have the option to move around, which looks like it could be quite helpful because I think... Okay, so I'll be curious. Um, in sometimes Zoom will now let you open the breakout rooms and move between them. Ah, you've got Femi's in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, well done. You brought him in. Hi, um, Femi. Hello. My Zoom crashed. I don't know what happened. It just went into a spinning wheel. I was going to join room five. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think that's going to be possible now, is it? Let's try again. Okay, thank you. Okay. So it's now just us two. It's just us two, yeah. Yeah. So that worked the second time with the thing. Sometimes the firewall kicks people out when you put them into breakout rooms. <laughs> it's one of those wonderful things about remote training. Brilliant. Um, anyway, yeah, we got there. So six minutes, I should start a timer really, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> so, Otherwise it's nine o'clock before yeah, anyone leaves. Well, <laughs> I usually work it out eventually, but I think I, I want to make sure that people who were, it took forever to get people in. So that's about three. We're in safe space. So that's the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think actually me botching things up a bit kind of helps create safe space in a way. Pretty much. So... I need to copy the link to the Jamboard. Maybe you can help me by following that link I've just put in. Certainly. And, and do you know what? Actually, um, I, I was just thinking, you might as well stay. Oh, I need access. Uh, access ooh. denied. You might as well stay host, because if I have the ability still to pause recording, stop recording at the end, allow people in and what have you, that, mm -hmm. that works brilliantly for me. Brilliant. Okay. Anyone with the link? I thought I'd click that. Um, try now. Okay. And that looks better. It's loading more. And we are into an untitled Jamboard. Which is now called? Generated change without generating resistance. <laughs> I'm almost a step ahead of you, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's as if we've aligned this up <laughs> to be doing this on purpose. <laughs> So let me. What was my question? What um, what helped? What helped um, to make 
change easy and enjoyable. Um, I'll put that at the top in a big sticky post-it and then hopefully everyone else can add things in. Carlos, Carlos. joined. Hi Carlos. Yeah, so the Jamboard link works well. Good, good. And I need to reshare it afterwards because people won't see it if it's being posted when they weren't in the room. Correct. We, we, I noticed we, before. That's caught me out before. And I'm a bit like, hi everywhere on the recording. You've probably got another three minutes of Giles and I just chatting. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to fast forward three minutes right now, it's probably probably good for, good for everybody. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, the other thing I've done, of course, is come back out of a breakout room, forgot that it's no longer sharing the presentation. And I've been talking away for five minutes with somebody going, uh, are you sharing anything? <laughs> <laughs> yep, and um, vice versa. Sometimes you unshare and uh, forget or forget forget that uh, you forget that you're sharing and you're talking to people as if they can see you and you're just correct. And, correct. Yeah. Oh, oh got Alistair as well. Alistair, my friend, Alistair, my good friend. So let's see. Mr. Corey is back. Hello. For some reason, I couldn't stay in the room. Did you? Oh, we we also have Carlos in, who hasn't. I was in, I was in room three with um, J F Unson, uh, Unson Unson. Unson, yeah, Unson. And um and uh, it just kept kicking me out and trying to put me back in and kicking me out consistently. Did you? Uh, which is a you, bit odd. Are you behind I'm a firewall by any chance? I don't believe so. I'm just on my hmm. mobile. Um, I don't. I, I haven't got my normal computer because my wife's um borrowed that for a client meeting <laughs> but, well, I'll, um, tell you, I'll tell you what Alistair you could you could be a um you could you could be a, a trailblazer here <laughs> go for it um I, so always, I always like doing just, that just remember when we talk tomorrow or thursday or whenever it is i'm going to remind you about being a trailblazer <laughs> <laughs> so have you seen in the chat so in the chat, there's a link to a Jamboard. Got it. And you should see a question, what helped make change easy and enjoyable? Got it. And if you there put your answers to that question on stickies on that board. Brilliant. And, and move them from the default place, because by default, Jamboard puts all stickies on top of each other. OK. <laughs> So Otherwise, it's right. a fantastic, a fantastic thing. So I'm going to try and do this all. So create a note. Okay, I've got a sticky note. Uh, who knows so what's going to happen? Carlos it's going to be great. Have left, but Christopher. Um, has I. It gave me the. Ch I had to leave and then come back um, in order to get out of that continuous loop that I was in. Ah, yeah, that often happens. It's actually, I'm, I'm seeing more problems with breakouts than I'm used to, but. Uh, yeah, there was, was Car weird. Carlos was uh, having a problem as well. It looks like Christopher had a problem. He's now rejoined us. But hopefully, it's the my it's the it's the minutia. It's not uh, uh, okay. It's not everybody. Yeah, and. We'll get we'll get some answers, so everyone will be able to see some some answers. That's the that's the idea. That was a shame. I was looking forward to chatting to JF. He's a he's a cool guy. I keep following his stuff on uh, on LinkedIn, <laughs> but I'll catch up with him later. Well, then yeah. make Let's... sure you come to the event on Thursday because he's part of US versus UK. Ah, uh, is that is that? That um, big old <laughs> chin wag you guys are all doing, right? Exactly. That's the chin wag we're doing. Um, t a tale of two agiles, that one. That's it. The tale of two. Yeah, I'm coming. Two. Yeah, I'm definitely coming to that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yes, resistance isn't futile. Here we are. Everyone's back. So welcome back, everybody. Hello. I hope, despite. 
Zoom was throwing a particularly spectacular storm of challenges there and knocking yeah. people out and moving people between rooms and everything that was going on. But I hope despite all that chaos, or maybe even because of that chaos, something creative emerged. Um, so what I would like us all to do now is to go into a Jamboard, which is in the chat and put your answers there um, to that question. What helped make change easy and enjoyable? Um, one of the little things about Jamboard is that it puts all post-its on top of each other by default. So mm -hmm. if you'd like to move the post-its once they've appeared to somewhere else on the screen, maybe grouping them with other similar ones, um, that would be great. If um. anyone... Roy, just a quick yes. question. I sure. assume you want us to be on uh, board number one. Yes, Is please. That... With the, the... Okay. Yeah. Because when uh, when I opened it, it automatically opened to board number two. Ah, thank you. I've just learned something about Jamboard. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> the F equals variable at the end makes all the difference. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Every day's a school day. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially when it comes to working remotely. So, I'm... Yay, here we go. When you're a part of... So, yeah, we need to unstack that top, that top cue. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> so, when the change helps me or lessens my pain, yes. Fun learning and aha moments, a part of the change and see the vision, which I think connects with involved down the bottom left, if you agree. And the change is incremental. I like it. I like it. You're, you're stealing all my thunder here, which is just what I was hoping for. Roy, do you want me to share my screen so everybody can see the, the same thing at the same time? I'm assuming that everyone already can by just by looking at the gem board. Good stuff. Um, if any, if anyone is, ha is anyone having trouble seeing the board? I was, I was hearing someone crying in the background, so maybe whoever that was was having trouble seeing the board. <laughs> but, but maybe they could be reassured that uh, they've probably got more important things to think about. <laughs> hey, we've got such a great crop here. So please do think about how they can be grouped. So we've got a little cluster around learning down here. We've got one about involvement. We've got iterative and incremental. Contribute to the design. Clear benefit, yes. Clear benefit to me. Learning something new. Yeah, so learning there. Worthwhile, that connects with benefit, doesn't it? Realization that it's changed dynamic, constant, and continuous. Yeah, so, oh, more benefits when I'm not forced. Yes, absolutely. Feel like I'm growing, so learning and growing. Two of us tried to move that one at the same time, so feel free to, uh, I, I moved it, you can move it if you want. Kind of little tussles with post-its on this thing. Um, and you find the benefit, yep, absolutely. So we've got a nice series of, oh, we've got loads more coming as well. So we've got all sorts of benefits here about, um, you know, when you've got control and influence, involvement, when it's incremental, when there's learning, when there's fun, when there's a clear benefit, clear benefit to you, um, when there's good communication, people are, you know, people are understood, um, a focus on the positive, um, ooh, uh, Ah, this is a playground or a sandbox to learn. Okay, so a learning frame around the whole thing. Even more on that learning as aspect. Um, 
So lots and lots that's already there. Um, I think our challenge is going to be to spot something that hasn't come up on the Jamboard in my presentation later on. <laughs> um, hopefully my presentation will at least provide some structure and some ideas um, to, to give you sort of clarity about these things. Um, it looks like we're mostly, the, 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 the flow of post-its has, um, has, has, has come to a stop or at least come uh, slowed down, I'm having trouble finding words. Um, anyone like to spend, you know, we've maybe got a, a minute or two, just I've been commenting on what I'm seeing here. Anyone else like to comment on anything that's been a particular, oh, yes aha moment or anything from this little exercise from what you're seeing or from the conversation i'm going to share the amount of positivity that's on the jam board ah. that's 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 one real thing that's coming out clear for me is, uh -huh. is that element of positivity that's really interesting isn't it not only is it positivity, but it's also universal. Everyone's share, sharing more or less the same things. Right, right. Let's right. test that right. hypothesis, JF. I think it's a really good one. Is there anything on that board that anyone would say, that would put me off, that would make change hard for me? I think that silence confirms your hypothesis, JF. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so we, we, we've got something here that's emerging, which is that actually, it's not, it's, it may be that there are some very general principles here that help people to engage with change and make change easy. It's also possible that we're, we're kind of some kind of filter bubble and we like it this way. But um, I like to think that actually it's true. And what goes wrong with change, I'd say, is that we tend to polarize into a sort of us and them and us we need to control and them or we don't want to be controlled by them and i think that's what makes change hard in a lot of situations um, any other comments observations thoughts i have to say i found a very uh, nice word vision and that's something like, especially when you're working in the company and there is a leader who has the vision of the future and they, they can, right. it's about the story and all this again. But uh, I really like that yeah. note over there. Right. So when change is inspiring, when there's a vision mm. for it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. So do you want to, do you want to see my presentation on this? Or have you got everything you need? <laughs> okay, no. JF's nodding. So, love yeah, to see it. Just for you, just for you, JF. Um, so, has anyone ever seen this before? Ooh, nice. Been <laughs> <laughs> a few times. Once <laughs> or twice, right? Yeah. So let me let me summarise this in a bit of a PowerPointy way. And also, so agile, but four values, people and interactions, incremental delivery of software, collaboration, responding to change. Yeah, all very familiar stuff. I'm going to just generalize it, at least if, if I've got this slide as I think I have. No, I'm not yet. Okay, so let's look at, though, at change management. Um, what, what, what are the sort of equivalents in conventional change management? Follow the process. Change happens in one big bang. It's top down. You're told to do it. And it's especially ironic when you're told to do agile and you're told to follow the plan. So almost an opposite set of values in change management. So this is why I say, you know, let's stop doing agile change in a waterfall way because I think that looks like waterfall change to me. Um, there's this discipline called solutions focus. Who's hand, just quick hands up who's who's had any kind of exposure to solution focus? So <laughs> Karen that was yesterday. Uh, Cathy, <laughs> Matthew did I see your, your hand go up in the... No, no, no I was, I was just 
play with my hands and they were <laughs> that I was distracted by the grass behind you yeah. but <laughs> exactly few, I've seen a few a few few hands go near cameras rather than, uh, to men where, yeah okay so a few of us so solutions focus is an approach to coaching and change um, that I've been using since 1992 and it's, I just think it's incredible it's it's a bit of a paradigm shift it's completely or poolingly named but it's incredibly aligned with the Agile Manifesto. It's, it's actually all about people and interactions. There's a, there's a solutions focus saying, the action is in the interaction. Um, it's about incremental delivery of change. As someone has said on the Jamboard, um, when change is incremental, um, that's what solutions focus does. Let's proceed with our change in small steps. It's 100% about collaboration. As, as the coach, in a solutions focused scenario, your, your, what you do is you collaborate. It, it's, it's, it's fundamentally collaborative. Oh, so, so Giles has just told me you're seeing the Jamboard, not a presentation, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, is, that, is that true? Is everyone seeing? I'm, I'm, seeing, the I'm seeing the presentation. You might just. Ah, so it's, it's, it's yes, it's. Uh, not showing here at my end, so I'm not sure what's being recorded. There, there will be another because window somewhere. You're you're still looking at the the browser window with um with the Jamboard. Correct. So back to Zoom. I'm back in Zoom, and it's your window sharing, and it's a picture of the Jamboard. Is That's... that because your co-host, Charles? I wonder if it is. Yeah, that it could well be. Bonkers. So I've just I've Thank just. You for me. Yeah. Does that solve the problem? So let me let me stop this share and then reshare. Um, that can only possibly be a Zoom bug. Um, Giles, do you now see? I do. I now okay. see. A pre I now see a presentation. Good. Mm. That is much better. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Um, Solution focus, it's, it's, it's completely collaborative. Everything you do is a collaboration and it's co responding to change. There's a slogan that says, our job as change agents is to identify useful change and amplify it. And again, that's kind of the key here is looking for change that's either already happening or wanting to happen and amplifying that, making, allowing it to happen, not even making it happen, just allowing it to happen. So that creates a scenario where we've got um, agile, I would say solutions focus is actually an agile change. I'm bringing those two together. And waterfall change is what I'm going to call the, the old way, the, the 20th century way of doing change. And by the way, this isn't just me saying it. There are various other people around talking about different models of change. People like... Um, Mike Burrows, uh, Daniel, is it Mezek? It says open space agility. Various people talking about engagement models and this kind of thing. So let's just com compare and contrast. So on the waterfall side, we have a push model of change. The change agent pushes change onto the organization. Agile change is a pull model, which it's kind of a bit more agile that way, isn't it? You know, when are we ready for change? Let's just pull, pull in the next piece of change and um, make it, um, sorry, I'm distracted by uh, Maru arriving. Welcome Maru, uh, mid presentation here. Um, so another, another, a few more things to contrast between them. So waterfall change, when you push change on people, guess what, they resist. Whereas <laughs> in agile change, it's, a, it's invitational. Yeah, if you're stimulating change, you're inviting people into a change process. You may be inviting them to make a change that you're leading with some kind of vision, or you may be inviting them to create the change themselves. Either way, it's invitational. You may, if you're lucky, in the waterfall side, get compliance, but you actually get collaboration. And which would you prefer? And emotionally, I would say that around most change processes that are done in a waterfall way, they tend to create anxiety. What's going to happen? What's my place in this going to be? Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to be doing a job I hate? You know, whereas you get creativity if you if you really do agile change. 
And finally, at the end of the process, with a, with a conventional change management thing, um, which by the way, Kota says takes 10 years to embed. <laughs> Who's got 10 years to embed a change process? Not me. Um, at the end of that process, people are like, oh, can we go back to normal now? Can we stop all this bloody change? Um, which probably means going back to how it used to be with a bit of change. So it tends just to fall backwards as far as it will go. Um, whereas with an agile change where you're pulling in, it's invitational, you've got collaboration and creativity. People are like, right, okay, what should we change next? What should we improve next? How should we get more agile? So um, if we're thinking of this in terms of change as agile transformation, um, I'm just curious to know um, what your responses are. I've seen a thumbs up from Alberto already. Um, I'm just curious to know what your responses are to that. Does that, does that align with your experience on a previous thing? I'm seeing some nods, cool. Um, I should ask open, an open question really, rather than a closed one, shouldn't I? So what, um, yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts having heard that presentation and reflected on all of your experience together? Uh, I think Roy, if I, <clears throat> sorry, if I go first quickly, the, um, the, the first thing that strikes me is that now I understand what I did on my last gig and why it worked. <laughs> <'Cause> hey. <laughs> hey. I did, I, I, and I was, I was, just, you know, I mean, I, I basically was very fortunate to be given free reign and I thought I in just really instinctively and you've just explained exactly what happened. I think the next thought is if you don't experience it, I wonder how, how quickly you would adopt it. Um, having experienced it myself, I'm kind of going like, that's it. That's the answer. Yes. Here is my evidence. Here's my proof. Let's yes. just do it again. Yes. Um, but if you haven't actually experience it. I wonder how, how you would, um, you know, go about doing that. But, but no, thank you. You've helped me understand myself. My pleasure. And, uh, and that's, that again is part of, you know, that's the same pattern at another level. It's, it's a pattern of find out what's working and do more of that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's you bringing about change through experiential learning. Sorry, that, that's not a very clear way of putting it, but it, it it's we're in we're in the same territory here of yeah so so that was an example of noticing useful change you know the way that you ran that change process and amplifying it making it conscious doing more of it the answer to your second question is i have a training course <laughs> which <laughs> sorry that's my <laughs> that's my business that's that's <laughs> my business is to have that answer to many questions but i really do um for this one so thanks alistair uh, anyone else other thoughts? Karen, go for it. Um, I, I found the, the overview of the uh, three columns really yeah, uh, convincing, and I think that's, that's really true. Mm. It reflects a lot of my experience. Um, I firmly believe in the pull principle. Still, I think sometimes it's not so easy um if you're in an environment where people have not been invited to anything for a long time yes. that first of all if you invite them to do something they're like yeah but i have all these other things to do and other so they don't even know they 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 are allowed to do something they feel like doing because it feels so awkward yes and um, and that, that reminds me of principle, but I'd be really interested to, yes. to yeah, find a bit more, find out a bit more how, yeah, how, how to do it better. I don't know. Sure. Um, and, and my answer to that is after the break, well, I've got one answer to that question. Um, another answer is to reflect on who's heard of turn the ship around or who's read turn the ship around. Yeah. I have. Right. So, in that story, you've got two submarines. People often th only think of the Santa Fe, the second one where it worked. Olympia? He, Olympia, was that, is that the, third, the one where it didn't work? Oh, yeah. the, the Olympia was the one he was originally going to get assigned to. That's before it. He got. Yeah. 
And on that one, people didn't take to this invitational change model. So yes, it can work better in some places than others, no question about it. And if, if I haven't convinced you by the end of this, Karen, of, of a way to make it work e to some de even to a small degree in a difficult situation, ask me the question again, and I've got another answer for you, but we'll leave that one to the end, yeah? Um, yeah, I'm so glad I opened this up for questions, comments and questions. We've got some fabulous things coming out. What else? Jaya? Um, the like Karen, the, 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 the three things com compared and contrasted resonated. Uh -huh. I, I love the way you put it. Agile change should stop using waterfall change methods. Yep. And I'm looking back and reflecting on, on stuff that I've experienced. You're very right in that, in that most of the agile changes that have been successful are more participatory yep. and more of the pull model Whereas the ones that didn't succeed were more the waterfall prescriptive. You're going, you have, you're going to do this come hell or high water. And so those are some of the th patterns that I'm seeing now that now that you've compared and contrasted it mm -hmm. in that wonderful slide of yours. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Oh, it's so good if to I, hear that. If so, I may yeah. just say, sure. oops. Yeah, go for um, it. There's, there's, um, there's ongoing discussions about a very popular adopted um, agile the, with question mark approach that is that does appear to be quite prescriptive, that appears to have a top-down approach, and people don't feel safe using it, mainly because it appears to be command and control mm -hmm. um, when you have to plan three months in advance. There's a big question as to whether with that model you're actually responding to change. Now, it's gaining popularity and a lot of enterprises are using it because it's easy for them to carry on with their old traditional ways and at the same time say, oh yeah, we've got, we're agile. Um, we're embracing agility and we are responsive to change and we are collaborating because we have these huge exercises where everybody comes together and we're doing upfront planning. And guess what? That upfront plan doesn't change in the 10 week period. So it'd be interesting to know what your thoughts are in that and how that applies to the model, the pull, the push pull hmm. model that we've just looked at. Okay. To be fair, I'd say this is, um, what's the word? I don't feel I'm completely qualified to answer that in, in any great depth. I haven't applied this in the context of, we, you were talking about safe, yeah? Yeah. yeah? And I think, isn't it, isn't it so ironic that people don't feel safe when they're using safe? <laughs> That's but, why I use yeah. That's why I didn't want to go into be explicit with the name, but okay, fair enough, that. fair enough. that's a talk yeah. in its own right, Roy. <laughs> and and interestingly, I've got a meetup coming up later this month. I haven't publicized it yet, but Luca Minudel is giving a talk on on precisely that topic and, and a better option. So maybe maybe the thing I should do is simply refer you to that. Um, <laughs> watch um, the other the thing I would say is that I think PI planning, I do know some, some real agilists who do PI planning, not in the sense of creating a fixed plan, but in a sense of if you do gather everyone together every three sprints, you get communication happening, you find intercompatibilities, you find synergies. So I think the act of coming together seems to be helpful in an agile context but i absolutely agree if, if you if you lose touch with the principles you've lost touch with the principles i'm seeing two hands up i'm seeing matthew and munway um i didn't see whose hand went up first so I think it was munway's hand that came up first cool okay so Mun munway if you'd like to go first and after i've heard from both of you i think we'll we'll move on to the next thing so munway um thank you um 
first of all, sorry, I need to keep my video off because my internet is not happy with me. Understood. Um, so the interesting thing is, um, personally, I like the pool model. Um, however, I have experienced that in uh, companies or groups who have not worked um, this way before, when you just open it up, um, as Karen was saying, um, they don't know what to do. So yes. you actually need this top down. So my experience is you actually need the top down, but to actually explain to them um, what the goal is and that they and invite them for feedback. And um, interestingly, when I found out that uh, the, the team would actually try you when you say you invite feedback, they would give you very, very tiny feedback yep. just to see how you react to it. Yep. And if they realize that they can um, affect the change, that, that you actually take that into consideration, then they start opening up. But yep. I, I found that um, in those situations, you really have to do top down because they, they've never experienced it before. And uh, you, you will have to do that. Otherwise, they just sit there and, and wait for you to tell them what to do. I think you or, make or just come along as, as they have always been. Yeah, I think you make a really excellent point there, Manuel. And I think even this is best introduced incrementally. So if this is completely yes. countercultural, you can't just jump there. Um, and it sounds like, you know, the people you're talking about have got great wisdom in, in, in checking out whether there really is psychological safety. And, and, and that itself has to be created incrementally. So yeah, lovely points, thank you. Matthew? Um, yeah, I think my point, my experience sort of based on what Femi has said is sort of along the same lines, but my experience of like big meetings, we sometimes have them at work, is that like we had like an all managers meeting in my company and there were like 50 people in the room or something completely mad. And it's a bit like, you know, and there are about six of us who actually said anything at all yeah. Um, so why didn't we just have a meeting of the six of us troublemakers? And then I suppose that's sort of <laughs> top down. But like, you know, you does you've got to be careful with big groups because lots and lots of people find it difficult. I find it difficult to be honest. Um, so I don't have the guts to do a presentation like Roy. So you know, but it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, very good. Yeah, well done. 50 people in a room, all uh, one conversation, hopeless. <laughs> Good point, Matthew. Brittany, you've, your hand's up, can you be quick? I, I can, and, and I don't know if you'll have a quick answer, but um, how much time does it take to unlearn a behavior? Because if, if the default position that most of us are experiencing is this, this, this waterfall mentality, how do you unlearn the behavior? Um, I have a training course. <laughs> it's what I find is that immersed in the training for two days, people start to learn a new paradigm. Um, unfortunately, these days, two day training courses don't really, you know, it's hard to get people onto two day training courses. So over an extensive period of maybe six months of r rigorous practice, fairly rigorous practice, two, two hours a week of training. I think people do. The thing is, once it, once it becomes a new skill you can do, and you start to see how it really makes a difference, then it starts to become something you do put into practice. So I, I, again, I don't think it's all or nothing. I think, you know, even this has to be incremental. I, I, I've, I, I, this is something I've learned from, you know, a few, th I think three of your questions just now, is you can't just big bang change to water f to agile change you have to you have to go one step at a time um yeah and and karen still asked me that question at the end because there is a way to get started even even in difficult environments anyway um what i'd like to do now is um we're going to take a break but I want to ask you to think about something during the break. That is, the question is, and I'll put it in the chat so everyone can see it as well. What specific change do you want to generate? So let's just 
between us now, let's just take a couple of examples because I've got a few coaching points on what makes a good example here. And then we'll take the break. Your unconscious minds can think about this and then we'll come back. So um, what change would you absolutely love to generate? Maybe at work, maybe at home. Sorry, but you mean change even in personal life? Uh, so sure. personal agility? So, all right. I mean, if it's, if it's something that's about an agile team, um, you and your role as an agile coach or scrum master or whatever, then, you know, that's fantastic. But all, you know, any example will do. Hey, Jamie. So Maru has written focusing on a task for chunks of 25 minutes, truly focusing. Okay. Uh, here. I just am logging in on another computer. Ah, got it. It comes from the fact that there is a lot of discussion about um, how people understand the work in progress limit of one that the purists um, keep explaining and people understand it as, you know, the whole company can only have one program or one project or one product and it leads to useless discussions. And my personal understanding is the WIP limit of one is what you're doing for a certain uh, unit of time that you define as your um, it, it, um, no, it, iteration and as a person in agility I try to me since I can't focus for that long I can't use iterations of a week or a day um, I have I decided to use ones that are 30 minutes and work my way, way up to longer ones in case I can focus and don't get disturbed even at home you know you get a lot of interruptions and so that's my personal strategy you can <laughs> call it uh, sounds good yeah it's a Basically, but uh, you know, it's it's being able to implement Pomodoro. You know, uh, there is a yeah. Okay. Who has so been actually, Mara, I tell you, I think this the I, I'm not sure that this example. You know, it's a it's a question I absolutely love, and and I've got a training course on that as well, but not when I'm mentioning tonight. Um, but I think for what we're doing tonight, given given what's coming and the exercise that's coming, it's better in this case if we're talking about a change that something specific that you're wanting someone else to do differently because that's um you know that that's that's the that was the assumption i had when i designed the training you in a way your example is better but not for not for this evening right, um, so maybe could could um yeah so that was helpful actually that they were clarifying it's changed for someone else to make that you'd like to persuade them to make could someone give me an example of some change you'd like you know, your team or someone to make. So get people to follow the COVID rules. Good point there, Alistair. Um, <laughs> make it really specific. So, so that pe people is very general. Which person in particular um, will, will help to um, make this more tractable, yeah? So it's a change that someone specific would make. Um, so changing the process by which organizations recruit for agile practitioners again wow femi amazing but where are you going to start which organization who is the specific person who you want to do something different so this is what's going to make it tractable you know as i was saying this there's a possibility that you certainly some of you um may take away something really specific at the end of this evening that will help you to actually get some actual change rolling but that's only going to happen if you pick a really specific example of a specific person and a specific behavioral change you're looking for um, so ask scrum team to do upfront planning yeah that's tina that's that's cool that's 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 getting specific i'm assuming it's a particular team <laughs> and it's about getting that team or sorry you said teams so maybe focus on one team as a starting point to do upfront planning. Yeah. Um, good. So are you getting the idea that we're looking for specific change, specific person to make? And um, we'll come back in five minutes and make a start. I'll present you with the model of the zone of productive change and the seven tools for helping to bring it about. Yeah, see you in five minutes. 
Shall we pause the recording, Giles? Okay. Yay. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Um, so as I was saying before the break, I'd like to think about the change you want to generate. And I've just put a link to the Jamboard in the chat. And this time, thank you, Manway, um, this time it will come up on the second slide, which is just the same game as before. The question at the top, what change do you want to generate? Um, just put one specific change up. Maybe include who, who you'd like to do something different and what you'd like them to do. Just so we get a sense of the change, the sort of changes you're wanting to bring about. Okay, so we're talking about um, tackling a problem with positive confrontations, having a CFO embrace Agile. I saw a post, a post on LinkedIn where Alistair Coburn literally had an elevator conversation with a, a chief executive who said to him, what, what do, what's this Agile then? And he said, early delivery of business value. Oh, sounds good, what else? Less bureaucracy. Hmm, sounds good. The, uh, the organization went on to be very dedicated to their Agile transformation over the following two years. So uh, that's learning from the master. Um, more flexible budgeting. Um, stick to a pandemic exercise routine is that is that you or someone else <laughs> um head of agile to support the managing director in attending <laughs> so getting the managing director to attend scrum training um so we've got oh, a few one there for me have the cto understand what collaboration means Ooh. <laughs> As if I didn't know what that was. <laughs> so with, with some of these, it becomes a case of chunking down into smaller, more specific, more achievable um, behaviours. But I think this is, this is looking good. We've got specific individuals, we've got specific areas of change. Um, continuous improvement mindset, yes. Um, Change which helps improve the current way of working. Yep. Um, getting a team to relocate. Classic, absolutely classic change that can go extremely smoothly or extremely roughly, if that's the word, depending on how it's done. Stop daily stand-ups overrunning. I'm seeing the word overrunning and thinking I'm in danger of doing that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I've, I'm seeing the examples coming up. They're looking good. That's excellent. So I'm going to move on to, um, first of all, the seven step model and then the zone of productive change. So if you'd like to come back to Zoom and take a look at this slide. So far, it, I presume you've just got a white slide that says generating change without generating resistance. Everyone seeing that? Yes. Even yes, my co-host. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, step one, find the zone of productive change. I'm going to be telling you what that means in a minute. Um, first of all, find what change people desire find the overlap between those desires among different parties and then engage motivation. So that's, that's A, that's the first three steps. Then invite progress. And this is establish an outcome, a guiding star or direction for things to move in. Establish the resources, the things that are already in place 
that are helping to move in that direction already. And action, as you've, you know, has already come up many times before from your explorations, it's incremental change. So small step incremental actions here to start making that change happen. Um, and then iterate. So um, review the change that's been made. Did it help? If so, do more of it. If it didn't, stop it. Do less of it. Bin it. Oh, uh, revise it. And then repeat the whole process. Yeah. Obviously, ridiculously quick overview. But let's go into the first bit. Let's go into the zone of productive change. Um, and a friend of mine wrote a piece of software for me. Sorry, I'm going to stop sharing that. And um, if I can find it. Zoom's doing funny things. Um, what's it gone? There we go. Um, sorry about this. Sometimes this is slick. Today, less so. Okay, good. Um, so, if Zoom will let me share the screen. Yes. So can you now see a screen that says zone of productive change in a white background? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so first we've got first circle going up here is change the organization wants. Yeah, so this is a Venn diagram. Anywhere inside this purple circle is change that the organization wants, which typically means you as a change agent want. So if you're if you're an agile coach or a scrum master, you will be thinking of yourself or a, a leader or a manager of change. You'll be thinking of yourself as, as sort of occupying this circle. Then let's not forget the customer. Change that the customer wants in some way. Obviously, customer is a big population, um, so it might it might not be that this is immediately apparent but basically this is to remind us to think of yeah let's make sure that this change is serving what the customer needs so it's serving the overall needs of the system because if it's not good for the customer it's not good for anybody and then of course change the team wants now what i'm assuming here is that we're in a scenario where it's like an agile coach looking for a team to change if your example is different to that, then this is whoever you're thinking of. So it might be the CTO in one of those, you know, in those examples. It might, it might be, I didn't see personal ones going up, but it might be your partner. It might, you know, could, could be whoever it is you want to change. Now, what you'll notice here is that we have in the middle got an overlap between all three circles. We do have a zone of productive change in this case, but you can't take that for granted. Sometimes what's wanted by the people the team is completely separate to what's wanted by the organization um, sometimes um, it's just that it's very very small and so finding that zone of productive change is a bit of a needle in a haystack um, so let's just between us just have a very quick discussion on what sort of things we can do to let's first of all let's suppose that we've got a situation where the we don't have a zone of productive change the the team doesn't want much change and what it wants doesn't really overlap with the organization or the, or the customer needs what could you do in that situation to to generate a zone of productive change I guess try and do some changes the team wants and then some changes the organization and customer want. Right, so start with some change the team wants. And then my guess is that that would actually increase the flexibility of the team. They'd be more interested in doing other changes. Also, because they've got what they want, they might be feeling a closer relationship to the organization. So yeah, that that's straight in. Was that was that Matthew who said that? 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, it got was. called away on a call. So if you're back with us, Matthew, yes. yes, it doesn't always happen at the wrong moment. So yeah. that's absolutely bang on what I would recommend. Thank you. Um, other other possibilities anyone can think of? Incentivize uh, the team to meet the need of the organization and customer, and so that way that it it naturally pulls them closer. And the more you incentivize it, it just naturally builds that momentum. So, it, so in, in the end, you're it's one in the same it's one in the same goal. Yeah, so incentivizing the team to want what the organization and the customer wants. I'd be slightly careful about that because it's, it sounds like it's driving things towards an extrinsic motivation rather than intrinsic. And, and it costs money. But I, it, absolutely, it's a strategy. It can work. So, yeah, cool. Thank you. What are the, what are the possibilities? For me... Even though it's highly unlikely, we can look at smaller segments of what the customers uh, customers oh. want, not just one monolithic group, and see which ones are closest to us to make first move towards. Um, and that's for me the less, the least likely to, you know, to be easy to do because customers you don't have that much control. All you can do is identify which ones are closest to what you can offer. The second most likely one, or least likely one, is what moving or changing or expanding the scope of what the organization wants and normally it's better to constrain the space of what the organization wants and make it fit closer to what the customer wants and at very last but the th thing we have most control on is expanding what the team wants so that it has as much overlap as possible with, with what the organization slash the customer wants Okay, so how would you go about expanding what the team wants? What, what change the team wants? Well, uh, two levers. One is selecting the right people to talk to about this. Uh, okay. So not changing what the team identifying the ones that are aligned, most aligned. The other side of the tree would be to uh, re use rhetorics or alignment on the mission or the why or uh, mm -hmm. whatever have to be convincing maybe finding another how can i say another consensus in the company but what's the mission of it talk more about what the customers want who they are etc i don't know a lot of psychology right so I'm, I'm hearing so leadership was mentioned earlier i'm hearing something there about talking about the vision for the organization for the customer helping bring people on board with that Great. Okay. So we've got a variety of ways we can, we can play with this zone of productive change. Um, but let's suppose, well, let's, let's, let's see where we're at actually, um, in your specific examples. So let's go back to the slideshow. Um, and where have we got to? I share the slideshow now. So we've got this zone of productive change. And if we're thinking in terms of finding the sweet spot in the middle, then that's already moving us in the right direction. We're already starting to collaborate more. Um, here is, if we were in the same room, I'd give you a worksheet, but uh, you might have to use good old paper and pencils and things again. Um, let's say anyone's got a high-tech version of this. But basically what I'd like you to do is take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle, and on the left, what change do they want? So this is your, your particular example. What change do they want? And on the right, what change do you want? So this is the first step of our exercise. And what we'll do is we'll do this. Can, has everyone got that? Can I, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop the screen share um, so we can all see each other. Um, gosh. So what I'd like you to do is just to spend two minutes now, just brainstorming in those two columns. What change do they want? What change do you want? Sorry, um, Maru. So, so in this case, we're not we're not for just for the sake of this exercise. It's a good question. For the sake of this exercise, we're not thinking about the customers. Um, we're thinking um, they in terms of the people we're wanting to influence. 
so it'll be like the team or the CTO or whoever it is. Thank you, good questions. No problem, Mary. Great question come in from Jamie. What if they don't want to change? Ah, well, I'm reading that question differently. I'm reading Jamie as saying, what if they don't want change? Oh, want to change? Oh, I added a word in. Ah. No. And yes, that's that, is, as well. that is a great question. Um, they might not want change that you're aware of, but maybe there's some other kind of change that they would quite like. I've, I've yet to met, meet a human being who is completely content, and apparently even Buddhas want to change the world to make, to make, them, to make the world freer of suffering. So, as far as I'm aware, everyone wants some kind of change. So when you're kind of done, just spend 15 seconds just sitting there thinking, hmm, what else could go on this list? In fact, don't spend 15 seconds, spend 30 seconds, maybe even 45, because that's often where the insights come that, that unlock things. When you're not getting answers out of the cache where you're digging a bit deeper for them. So it'll take a little bit longer over this. Claire has actually raised a good comment as well in the chat. Uh -huh. They won't articulate what they want to change. It uh -huh. is easier for them to stay the same than have a conversation about what they want to change. That is an excellent question. I'd like to address it later. Um, I think, first of all, what we're doing here is guessing change that they might like. Change, we're guessing what change they want how we then how we have the conversations following on from that i think it's a it's a, such an important topic i want to address it separately so first of all just change they want uh, which is obviously is a guess on your part and change you want thumbs how up we, to claire there say again she gave thumbs up to that yeah cool excellent thank you so i'm just setting up a um setting us up in pairs. I'm hoping the breakouts will work a little better than they did last time. <laughs> and what I'd like you to do in your pairs is the next step. So sharing... Um. So, sorry, I, did someone want to say something? I'm, I'm hearing weird electronic noises. Not sure if it was a person who wanted to just say something. I think it was just feedback coming from Matt's uh, screen. He okay. was just popping up as the main speaker. Okay, great. Um, so let me share share the slide again. So the next um, the next thing here is to look. Well, the next thing in real life will be to ask them what change they want. And yes, you're right. That is a, a non-trivial process. We can come back to that question. Please do, if I forget, please do ask me that again afterwards when we come to questions. But the next thing, 
And we're going to have to work on guesses, obviously, because the people I presume aren't here on the call today. <laughs> and if they are, there isn't a chance to have that conversation. So, so step four will be finding the overlap, which of course is the zone of productive change, um, assuming the customer's on board. Let's, let's make that assumption for now. So in your pairs, I'd like you to work together on this um, to the extent you can remotely, because I know you won't be able to see each other's writing. But just ask, ask your partner, so what's the change that they want? What's the change that you want? And what's, what overlaps are you starting to see there? Um, we will take um, three minutes each way. So I will send you a message when it's time to swap over. And I will close the room a minute early. And then at the end of that minute, just come back as we did before. Um, someone's just, just dropped out. So Giles, if I can move you into room one with Matthew, um, then, oh, we've, yeah, we've got a few. I think two. Alistair was on, has two instances, one for video, one for audio. So oh, okay. saying ignore the Alistair iPad instance. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. So I shall move so Claire was with Alistair's iPad and I will move you into a room with Maru who is at the moment by himself. So I think we've all got pairs and those pairs are of humans. Um, if, yeah, I'll keep monitoring that. Any questions before we go into the, the, the group? Okay, let's do it. Um, see you in six minutes. So would you be happy to join in with this one, Giles? I certainly will be, yes. So I was just going to just double check you wanted me to do that. So happy to yeah. do it now. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. All right. See you in See you in a bit. Hi. Hey, Matt. Now, I think we're the ones being recorded for the oh. after show video. So uh, 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 I hope you don't mind that. And uh, uh, we certainly uh, uh, obviously can uh, uh, share some amazing thought leadership here for everybody else to watch on video as they watch this back. So, uh, have you got the chart then? Have you got the piece of paper and everything? Um, I haven't fully. Um, I haven't fully got it. No. Okay. So we obviously had the three. What do we want? What do they want? Ask them was two, and then in the middle was obviously a zone of productive change. writing the same thing so I'm gonna I'm gonna play possum I'm gonna play the one who's going to be uh, listening to this because uh, I kind of got a bit of a takeaway of this already before this started so um, what do you want from or what do we want from the change from something that may be as if you're working with a team what do you want from that um, I want the team to work better um, to deliver more business value. I suppose if I'm like the CTO or whatever, um, I want the, the team to deliver more of the things that I'm interested in. I yeah. guess there's software people are probably don't care about if they want to do refactoring, but I guess you've pro they probably got, a, you've got to sell that. Uh, <laughs> so I want more features for the customers and more features that the organization cares about. Yeah. I mean, as a CTO, I think I sit here going, you know what, I actually just want <coughs> to achieve the right outcome, deliver the right value for the organization. I'm not necessarily uh, pervasive on how that's actually achieved, no. as long as the teams come together in the right way with the right mindset, the right sort of values and philosophy to actually achieve it. So it's how you bring about that change to that team to enable that uh, shift so that they do deliver the right value, the right outcomes that the business actually wants. 
um, less less sort of makes it less command and control then I suppose. Hmm. I want the delivery to be when uh, when on time I guess probably. Good metric. <laughs> um, and not too expensive. Yeah. True. True. Um, so we, we've I suppose we've we've covered the team. What do you think the organisation wants in this? Um, I think the organisation, the organisation probably like one of the things I think my uh, let's not say anything actually. Um, the organisation. <laughs> um, You're, <laughs> You're in safe space. You're in safe space. I think the organisation. Um, what does the organisation want? The organisation. The organisation doesn't want to have loads of extra work to do. Right. Um, it doesn't want to. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the things it wants. Um, it doesn't want, like, if it's a software thing, it to be crap, and then you deliver something, and then it calls loads of calls to the contact centre. Um, it wants everything to sort of keep working as else working as is. Yeah. So you want it to function as best as possible. Yeah. And I suppose you want the the teams to work on the right thing at the right cost at the right speed. Generating yep. the right outcomes. Yep. And if you have third parties, you might want things to be delivered um, at the time you've told the third parties, which might mean things actually need to be delayed. Um, because, I mean, that's a sort of general experience, I think, of what third parties is. You sometimes have to inform them of when you're delivering stuff in advance because they want to know. Um, and then, obviously, it's a bit awkward if you don't deliver on time either because you deliver early or late <laughs> very true over those could cause problems <laughs> and what do you think the customer then wants what change do they want um i think they want the change to be easy to use discoverable um all the existing stuff to keep working um and then suddenly they'll want everything to work on their phones or well that's already <laughs> happened, but you know um but also stay the same so it's yeah it's complicated i think right. the customers will want different things and where do you think the overlap is especially um, in that middle zone of productive change i think um okay that's a good question i think the the overlap the zone of productive change is going to be where you can deliver things that are, you want to deliver stuff that's reliable i think most different people want that don't they correct um something that's not going to create loads of contact probably everybody wants that including the customer because the customer doesn't really want to ring up and go and say i don't understand how to use your product anymore yeah, um, i don't know i guess that's it really isn't it um you know so small incremental changes is probably quite good for everybody to generate so have, those successful outcomes yeah well we have 20 seconds left i believe before we are <laughs> Bo booted out and returned back to the main session but that uh, brilliant i mean absolutely fantastic um you know i'm pleased to make sure we share some of the things we covered off back with roy yeah. and um yeah we'll go from there yeah we'll go for that see you in a few secs yeah. so i think you've just seen a message that says the the host muted everybody not me <laughs> I didn't do anything. Anyway, welcome back. First of all, I need to apologise for the fact that three minutes is a stupidly short length of time to, to, to do that in. Um, in. Given the length of time we've got for the workshop, it's only possible for you, for you to get a taste of the possibilities of what's off, on offer here. So, nevertheless, I want to ask you the question. Despite the fact there was only three minutes per person, did anyone find any zone of productive change? Did anyone find any overlap between what they wanted and what they thought their, uh, their partner, as it were, wanted, the, the, the person they wanted to change? Charles is, is nodding. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing towards Matthew, who came up with a very good of, uh, zone of productive change um, in our conversation. Okay. Um, so I think you wanted stuff that was sort of, it, it sort of changed in a small way. Yes. Um, and was discoverable and was reliable. And I think I'm probably missing something that I brought up earlier, and I can't remember. I blame the beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So you realise that, that the, 
the the other person wanted change that was going to be discoverable and tangible and and small and incremental as well i think we were talking about yeah okay okay right okay so that's interesting that's so you, you those are the sort of the qualities of the sort of change that the person would be interested in yeah right. okay yeah cool so you've got a, 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 a basis of common ground on we, we know we need to make a change shall we do it this way and you think that's probably a basis of agreement and that will expand the zone of productive change absolutely nice one did anyone else get a an overlap No. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I did. Yeah. Um, we both did. I guess we both shy. So mine is a bit tough to explain concisely. I will still try. The overlap is autonomy for both me and the team, and um, uh, ownership for both me and the team. That means when they do something that is shitty, uh, we need to confront it and change things so that it doesn't happen again, and not you know keep the extreme amount of freedom that they got from the beginning they can mm -hmm. keep if if you know if we see that something is obviously wrong they have to accept it and that's the agreement until then extreme own extreme autonomy they can mm -hmm. come back whenever they feel like it and that's something that they want and you want yes i mean it's, it would be great for me if i don't have to check uh, on everything and f fight 50 fires and solve problems right i'd be happy right okay okay Nice. Yeah. So I can see that they want to, they want to be able to just get on with it. You want them to be able to just get on with it. And it maybe if you can find a mechanism to make that possible. Yeah, that sounds like a zone of productive change to me. Cool. Okay. Anyone else who is being shy? Karen. Um, uh, maybe uh, Tina also wants to jump in, but I think we found something that was, I wouldn't call an overlap, mm -hmm. but more of a, um, of a yeah, order of things to do in order to come together. So right. it wasn't something that you could say, ah, you see, we want this, they, or I want this, they want that, so let's expand this. But it was rather do something first in order to to give something to them so that they can do something else that, that then pays into the overall account. Um, you know, uh, Tina, maybe you want to jump in. Uh, badly explained, I think. But um, I felt it doesn't always have to be an overlap, or mm. sometimes there might not be an overlap, and then then you might need to look for other little things you can expand on. Or amplify yeah yeah I think I think if if there isn't an over I mean obviously the first thing to do is to check out what they really want because so far all we've got is guesses but yes absolutely small steps that can move in the direction of finding an overlap because um, it's remarkable how often there is some kind of overlap there um, often quite surprising um, and when you find it, it just unlocks everything else. Um, okay. Katu, is that a hand uh, yeah. up to speak? Yeah. Yeah. Also, one question because, like, in my case, um, the team have some, they, they, they say what they want. Yeah. But when I'm doing it, what they want, they are against of that because actually they are not ready for that, what they want. <laughs> Okay, okay. And that's in many projects that happens, like there might be a wish of future, uh, but then like uh, especially the big leaders, when they understand that they also have to do something for that, they are not ready for it. Right, right, okay. So they say they want something, but then you actually do that thing they say they want and then they don't want it. Yeah, or they are not they are like, uh, no, let's do it another way. And then it's not anything what they have asked. Right. Totally opposite. Yeah, okay. So I think this is, this is, uh, there's something about, actually, can I, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some slides that I think will answer that. 
and probably answer the question that Karen was going to, to, to bring back at the end as well. Um, so this is, you, you basically you've, you've seen this slide before, but it will probably make a bit more sense now. So we've, we've been looking in this finding the zone, finding the desires, which we've, we've been guessing. So we, you know, we do need to find the actual desires. And here is actually Mun Wei answered Karen's question, or you know, gave my, my point here, which is start with the pain. Start with, what I would normally do is start with frustration. So if you invite me in to work with the team, the first thing I'm gonna do in the workshop is to say, go off in pairs, talk to each other about your frustrations, come back, tell me what you want instead. What is it that, what's the change that you're looking for? I've, I've yet to meet a, a team that doesn't have a whole bunch of frustrations and wants something to be different. So that's, that's, that's one way to get into finding the designs. That's my sort of pro tip really for that. Um, then finding the overlap and, you know, so often, you know, I think that example of Matthews, you know, they want to just get on with it. I want them to just get on with it. Let's, let's, let's set up a way that that can happen. And maybe, you know, to, to your, to your point, um, Cathy, maybe that mechanism is something that happens in a small way, but, um, we, I would do it in this kind of way. So we invite progress by first of all, creating this outcomes, guiding star or direction. And the solutions focus way of doing this is to make it incredibly vivid. It's like a day in the life of. So, you know, let's suppose it was exactly the way you were talking about, exactly what you, what you want. Can you, can you say just in a word or two what it was that they wanted? Um, they want simple IT <laughs> systems, which are all digitally signed. Or oh, what is the word? <laughs> digitally shaped? No. <laughs> digitally signed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So they want simple IT systems that are all digitally signed. So then you have a conversation with them is what is that, what is a day in the life of going to look like if you've got simple IT systems with everything digitally signed? And you, 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 it becomes something that's seen on a screen, how people talk, etc. It becomes really clear and vivid. And at that point, people start to get clear about what they actually want with it. Um, and then you, the, so that's, that's the outcome. So my point here is get people to really think through the detail of how it's going to be in the situation that they want. So it's not just an idea, it's an actuality. And then, well, what's already in place? You know, in what ways are there already things that are digitally signed, etc. cetera? Um, and then well, what small steps can we take to move, you know, maybe it's already, how would you say, if it was a scale, how, how simple and digitally signed are things at the moment, not to 10? Sorry, what was the if, question? <laughs> if, 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 if 10 is their ideal of what they, what they really want, mm. zero is the complete opposite. Where are they at the moment? Where are things at the moment on that scale? Just roughly. Well, at the moment, we have no systems because of that. <laughs> because okay. the, the, it's a startup. <laughs> so we are creating okay. everything. Right. So it's like a blank paper. So it would be nice to do it like they asked, not like the old style. Okay. Okay. So there is, there is a blank sheet of paper. Wow. Who would love to have a blank sheet of paper hands up when, for, for, the, for, for the next year, right? <laughs> so, so there's stuff there that's already good basically, in any situation. And there's a desire to get things to be good. And then, okay, so what's the first little thing we can do? You know, and this is, I mean, it sounds like a classic sprint, agile software development, yeah? What's the, what's, what can we do in two weeks that will move towards this perfect thing that you're trying to, trying to have? That's it. That might not work in practice here. That's the principle, the way that I would approach it. Obviously, the detail is something we, we need more than a minute or two to cover. And then we see whether that, that small step worked, we review it, we iterate it. Yeah? So that's the, that's the principle um, of how I'd go about this. Um, the section A here basically is what we covered this evening. Section B, that is, I mean, it's, it's coaching. So I'm, I'm specifically referring here to solution-focused coaching. 
Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to show you um, that slide, which I've kind of already talked about. Um, and then that slide. Um, and then just to say, does it work? Yes. So you can read this slide now, you'll get the slides to read it later, but just look at this one on the left. In a case where we were looking for improvements, we, we actually had the, a consultant come in and try and identify improvements in the system and someone check with, uh, invite people in the organisation to come up with improvements for process efficiency. 95% of what the consultant came up with, the staff came up with, yeah, on the first go. Um, it took two weeks to implement them instead of three months because the staff were engaged and the consultant needed to do 18, so only 11% of the follow-up, only needed to follow up once after two weeks instead of keep badgering them for three months, yeah. So that's the kind of difference that if you really get a pull system going, that's the kind of difference it can make. Um, you see other examples here. Um, and this is my favorite example, um, when a whole organization that had been growing very slowly but steadily for, I don't know, what's that, 10 years or so, they, um, they, they took this approach on board and for three years their growth was 50% a year and they stayed profitable as well. So this, you know, people can be sceptical and think that as a, as a manager, you have to get people to do it or they, you know, they won't. Actually, that's not true. You know, this approach can deliver spectacular results if you get people engaged in the right way. Um, I want to finish with a bit of a commercial break because the only way I can afford to, to give you an hour and a half for free is if some people sometimes sign up for a paid course. So here are th some things that are on option. You can come to some more free meetups. And you're, ver you're very welcome. Um, there's a pre-conference training as part of Agile Tour London um, in October. Um, it's a seven hour training in the solutions book of coaching I've been talking about. And the thing I'd most love you to come on is an ICF accredited training with Solutions Academy. It's 30, a 30 hour training. It starts Monday week. Um, the, um, the links to find all of these things are at that roymarriott.com slash events. And um, I'm going to put that in the chat as well. Um, so that's the end of my commercial break. Have we got time for questions, Charles? Yeah, I think we've got a few minutes for, for questions. So if anybody does have any, and then uh, uh, we will wrap up. Okay. Any, any questions? I think I need to my hand. Oh, sorry. So, so, so Brianne first and then Matthew. Okay. So, um, so I bring this up because it's election season in America mm -hmm. and I deal with elected officials. And I find no matter how great your idea is and how well you can incentivize and promote it, sometimes you got to abandon the, off, the, the initiative or the endeavor at that time just because the timing is all wrong. Yep. Is it ever okay to abandon that issue and come back to it at the later point and still have success? Of course it is. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if it's not going to work now, it would be futile to try and do it you know so if in the context of a pull system if 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 now is it, you're not getting the pull it, even for external reasons or now it's not feasible either abandon it or do a small version of it yeah. I, I guess the concern is like if you have to keep repeating it like there's a point where you lose the momentum and 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 the whole effort is lost um and finding that safe space particularly in a political in, in the political space uh, of, of dealing with elected officials can be very, very difficult. Um, I don't have good answers to how to even do this right now. I, 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 when it comes to political officials, I'm out of my depth. Of this <laughs> <laughs> Most of us are, so. It's, anyway, it, I, I, I worry about losing an initiative that is ripe for right now. It, everybody yeah. wants it, but you're just not gonna get the momentum you need. Even though everybody is like, everybody is on board and, and you desperately need to get this going. and. How do you try it another time, but not lose that small energy? Steps, small steps. Yeah. Try, try and do a mini version of it that keeps people engaged until there's a chance to do a bigger version. 
That would be a, my suggestion. Matthew? I, all, all I was going to say is I probably really need to head off now. So, okay. <laughs> that was an interesting question. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good long <laughs> session, so yeah. no, no problem at all. all. Right. Cheers, guys. Take Have care. Bye. Should we... Uh... I have one last one. Yeah, sure, Murray. Thanks, guys. Um, mine would be, how do you formulate the... What are different ways for you to formulate the... I don't remember what was step number four, but uh, in my experience, uh, that's got to be very carefully formulated. Not it doesn't have to be an OKR, but at least somehow a kind of consist, consensus uh, about what we want to achieve as a, as a compromise, as a team. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm... it's very easy to give up moving targets. Yeah. I think with change, it's slightly different to with developing software. Um, I think the key thing is engaging people in it. And yeah, we, within Solutions Focus, we have a particular way to help people to generate a vision or a guiding star that's both inclusive of what everyone wants. And, you know, so it's, it's it, everyone can respond to it. It's got some overall coherence, but it's also flexible in the face of change. So it is a bit different to OKRs when it comes to change, but yeah. Can't say much more than that, given the time constraints, I'm afraid. Look, I'm not, I, I was just going to say brilliant. I mean, look at that. We're spot on half eight um, here in the UK. Um, I appreciate, obviously, it's still probably morning and afternoon in other parts of the world. Um, but, Roy, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, thank you very much for coming along this evening and doing this with us. Um, I, I, I've personally grown. I've personally got new takeaways from this. I've got a, a list of things on my post-it notes that I'm going to start uh, researching uh, uh, tomorrow, probably, after grabbing a bite of food and, uh, and a beer. But uh, look, thank you very much indeed. And we look forward to having you again here at uh, Agile Expertise uh, to share some amazing other coaching insights with us. Thank you very much, Charles, and thank you, everybody. It's you've been a great group. It's been lovely to hear your questions. I've learned stuff, and that's always a good measure for me. So uh, take care. Hope to see you all thank soon. Thank you very much. Thanks great. for all the Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Good see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Thank, thank you. Later. Bye. Thank you.